In this video, we're going to learn about RQt, spelled RQt, which is a graphical program that lets us interact with ROS. The Qt in RQt comes from the Qt GUI framework, which is popular in C++ and Python, and which RQt is written in. To give us an interesting ROS system to inspect, I'm going to start up some TurtleSim nodes. To do this, let's open up a terminal and source our noetic setup file. And then we can ROS run turtle sim, turtle sim node. If you've shut down your computer or otherwise shut down ROS core since the last video, remember that you'll need to restart ROS master before you could use any nodes. With the simulator node running, I'm going to use control shift D to open up a dude terminal, source my opt ROS noetic setup file again. And in this one, I'm going to ROS run turtle sim, but the node type is going to be turtle teleop key. This node gives me a way to control the turtle using the keyboard. So with this terminal in focus, I can use the arrow keys to move my turtle around. Pressing left or right will turn it, and forward and backwards will move it forward and backwards. So now we've got two ROS nodes running, and I can tell they're connected to each other because one of them is reacting to the information being captured by another. Let's open up a third terminal tab with Control shift t source that setup file once again. And in this terminal, we're going to run rqt by typing in rqt. And when we run rqt, we get an empty window. This is because rqt is plugin-based. Every bit of functionality that comes with it is shipped as an independent plugin. And you can even write your own plugins to work inside of RQt. Some projects will use a combination of custom plugins inside of RQt to create a whole graphical dashboard for controlling their robot. Today, we're just going to talk about five of the plugins that ship alongside RQt and help us interact with the ROS system in general. The first of those plugins is the Graph plugin. To load up a plugin in RQt, go to the Plugins menu, and we're going to pick a plugin name from these collections. The graph plugin will be found under introspection. So plugins, introspection, node graph. And when that plugin loads, we get a picture of the ROS graph that's actually running on our system. If your visual doesn't look exactly like mine, double check these controls in the top left. They control which parts of the graph get shown in this visualization. Now in the graph plugin, ovals are nodes. So these are both nodes that are running in our system. Hopefully that's not a surprise because these are both the nodes that we started up in the other two terminals. Rectangles with arrows connected to them are topics. So we have three topics in our system right now. Turtle one pose, turtle one color sensor, and turtle one command zone. And then rectangles that encapsulate other nodes or topics tell us about namespaces. So here we can see we have the turtle one namespace, which collects the three topics that are associated with turtle one in our simulator. When you hold your mouse over different parts of the graph, it will highlight the connections for that. So if I hold it over a node, the node turns red, all of the published topics turn green, and all of the subscribed topics turn blue. When I move my mouse over a topic, the topic itself will turn red, any subscribing nodes will turn green, and any publishing nodes will turn blue. The general pattern is the current thing you're hovering over is red, all of the things it's sending information to are green, and everything that's sending information into it is blue. So that's the graph plugin, letting us visualize what nodes are currently running and how they're connected. This will be very useful as you start to wrap your head around more complicated ROS structures, and it's a great debugging tool when you're trying to double check that two nodes are connected. When you're using it for debugging, these two filter text boxes at the top can be useful. The first one lets you filter by node name. So if I type in turtle sim, and hit enter, I will only see the connections to the turtle sim node. If I clear that filter and go over to the next text box, I can put in a topic filter. So here I can put turtle one command vel and hit enter and I will see only the nodes that are interacting with the turtle one command velocity topic, which in this case is both of our nodes. So those filter text boxes can be super useful when you're just trying to double check one specific part of a very large graph. And that's it for the graph plugin. In order to unload a plugin, you can see a small set of window controls in the top right, and hitting that red X will close the plugin and unload it.
The next plugin we'll talk about is the Topic Monitor plugin. To load this one up, we're going to go to the Plugins menu, Topics, Topic Monitor. The Topic Monitor plugin will show you a list of all the topics that are currently available in your ROS system. This plugin gives us a combination of the ROS topic list, info, hertz, and echo commands. For any given topic, we can immediately see the message type that's associated with that topic. If we expand a topic, we can see the structure for that message and the types of each of the fields in that message. In order to actually start subscribing to and monitoring a given topic, we just hit the little check mark next to it. Now, under the Hertz column, we can see the frequency that it's receiving messages on that topic, and under the Value column, we can see the values for each of the fields associated with that message. So in this case, I can see all the pose information that our simulator is publishing. If I go back over to my keyboard teleop terminal and use the arrow keys to move my robot around, we'll see those values changing as the turtle moves. And if I want to see what messages my teleop keyboard node is publishing, I can expand command vel with all the fields underneath it and hit the checkbox. But you'll notice that it doesn't start printing anything out. That's because the teleop keyboard node is not publishing messages continuously. It only publishes a message when I press a key. If I press the forward key, for example, now we will see that I get values for that message popping up. In this case, I got a 2 in the linear x velocity. Notice that the hertz value is labeled unknown still, because without a continuous message stream, there isn't really a frequency. It's random. It's whenever I hit the keys. But I can see those numbers change as I use the arrow keys to continue moving the turtle around. And that's the Topic Monitor plugin. The next plugin we're going to talk about is the Message Publisher plugin. We can load this up by going to Plugins, Topics, Message Publisher. Notice that I can have more than one plugin loaded at the same time. You can have as many as you want, and you can even rearrange them around the screen or group them together into tabs within this window. The Message Publisher plugin lets us publish messages to a topic. By default, this list starts out empty, but we can add a topic by selecting the topic name from this dropdown. In this case, I'll select the command vel topic. The type will auto-update. I'll stick with the default frequency of 1, and I'll press the plus button. And I'll go ahead and drag this down underneath the other one so that we have a little bit more horizontal space. Now we can see that we have the turtle one command vel topic in our list. We can expand it to see the same structure for that message. And instead of showing us messages that are coming in, this is showing us the value that we're going to publish. So if I want my turtle to just move forward, I'm going to take the linear x value and set it to a positive number, like 1. And notice that nothing's actually getting published yet, and our turtle isn't moving. In order to start publishing, I'm going to go up here and click this checkbox. With that box checked, I can see the turtle move, and I can see in my Topic Monitor plugin that our command vel topic is getting published. When you're ready to stop publishing the forward messages, just uncheck that box. Now we saw that by default, the Message Publisher plugin will publish messages repeatedly. But what if we only want to publish one message at a time? Well, let's edit this message so our robot takes a step backwards by changing that one to a negative one. And then in order to publish only one instance of that message, what we can do is right click on the topic and hit publish selected once. When we click that, our turtle will take one step backwards and then stop because we've only published one message from this plugin. So that's it for the message publisher plugin. We can have as many topics on that list as we want, and we can even have the same topic multiple times if you want to alternate between different values for the same topic. I'm going to go ahead and unload both of these plugins by hitting the little X button in the top right corner. The next plugin we're going to talk about is the Plot plugin. We can load it up by going to Plugins, Visualization, Plot. The Plot plugin lets us plot values coming across ROS topics. In order to see values on here, we need to tell it what topics to listen to. Let's go to the topic field and type in turtle1 pose. When we hit the plus button, you'll see that a bunch of values get added to our graph. These are all the fields from the messages coming across the pose topic. And we can see these change if we go over to our teleop terminal and use our arrow keys to move our turtle around.
Now that's great, but sometimes you only want to plot one value from a message, not all of them. And we can do this by appending the field names to the topic name. So if I go to this minus dropdown and hit all, I can add back just the x part of that pose message by appending slash x to the end of my turtle one pose topic name. Now when I hit the plus button, I'm only seeing the x value for my pose. These controls in the top left of the graph will help you control the graph itself. In particular, these buttons will help you control the viewing range of the graph, and this button on the right will let you save an image of the graph as it currently looks. So if you're trying to capture data and put it into a report, or just communicate robot behavior with your teammates, it can be useful to crack open the RQ plot plugin and save a screenshot of the graph and the data that you're seeing. The last plugin we'll talk about today is the Image View plugin. So we can unload the Plot plugin and load up the next one by going to Plugins, Visualization, Image View. The Image View plugin lets us render images that are being published to a topic. None of our nodes right now are actually publishing images, so there's nothing to render right now. But if you had a camera node running, for example, you could pick the image topic from this dropdown and you would see the images here. Most of the rest of these controls you won't have to deal with, but again, we've got a little save screenshot button that will capture the current frame and save it to a file. That's it for the ImageView plugin. Very basic, but it's important that you know it's there. The last thing I want to talk about is command line shortcuts for RQ. Many of these plugins have command line shortcuts, so you can quickly get to a version of RQ with just that plugin loaded without having to dig through all the menus. If I close RQ and go back to my third terminal tab, I can type in RQ underscore and tab complete to see all the options that are available to me. Each of these is a shortcut that will load RQ with a specific plugin. So for example, RQ graph will load up the graph plugin. I don't have the menus to load anything else up, so this is just useful for looking at the graph, but it's a nice shortcut. You'll notice that there are also command line shortcuts for RQ image view and RQ plot. This is a nice way to quickly dive into an RQ tool without having to navigate all the menus. And that's it for this video. We've introduced you to RQ, one of the graphical tools for interacting with ROS. We've seen some of the plugins that come built in with it. We saw how the graph plugin gives us a visualization of the connections between our nodes. We use the topic monitor and message publisher plugins to read and write messages from topics in our system. And we use the plot and image view plugins to render data from ROS messages in a visual way. Next, we're going to dive in to creating our own packages and writing our own ROS C++ code.